Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. People having the audacity to tell working people what they can and can't do is always pretty hilarious from an outsider's perspective. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Entitled parent thinks they own the place and disregard the rules. This story dates back to my second or third year working inside a private compound. This compound has a gym, pool, and tennis court, all of which I'm assigned to take care of. I mostly stay in the gym on desk and keep an eye out on the pool and tennis court and enforce some rules, one of which is a really important one that has been repeated many times in emails, and it's do not leave any personal belongings by the poolside after you have left. This rule is really important due to the constant guests people bring to the pool, and of course having a random floaty or towels all over the place isn't a good look. The story began when one family that has broken the rule a few times leaves a giant smiley face floaty by the poolside that I've encountered when opening the gym. Normally I would tell them to take it, but I was told to confiscate the floaty and deflate it to fit in our storage room. So I spent about an hour laying on said floaty for it to deflate. Context was due to it being too big. I couldn't simply put weights on it or leave it to deflate alone. If so, it would have taken a few days. The second day, one of the parents' children decided to ask about it. I'll be using K, kid, but wasn't entitled, but spoiled, and BB, big brother of the kid. And last but not least, EP, entitled parent. K, hey, I'm sorry, but have you seen a big smiley floaty? I needed to play with my friends. Me. I'm sorry, but we've confiscated the floaty. K. Why did you do that? It's my floaty. Me. Well, we've told you many times to not leave it by the poolside. This is not the first time. So if you wish to get it back, you'll have to talk to the owner of the compound. Side note, the owner and his wife, who's my boss, are the ones who enforced the rules and told me to do what I did. In comes Big Brother. BB. Hello, I want to ask about the big floaty that has a smiley face drawn on. My sister says you have it. Me. Hello. Yes, we do. It was confiscated and put away since you left it on the poolside, even though we have a rule not to do so. BB. Can't you just give it back? Me. No, your parents will have to talk to the owner of the compound. He leaves, and the other day the parents came. EP. OP, my kids told me you confiscated their floaty. You have no right to do so. Give it back. Me. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. As I've told your kids many times, we confiscated because you left it by the poolside, and we've informed you multiple times that it isn't allowed, and you have broken the rule more than once. It was demanded of me to confiscate it and not give it back without the owner's permission. EP starts to raise their voice. This is not your place or your job to do so. These are our property, and we can do whatever we want. You can't just take our belongings and hoard it without our permission me. If you wish to complain about this, you're more than welcome to speak to the owner. As I've told your children, if you want to retrieve it, you could have done so directly and perhaps something could have been worked out. They left, and the other day, I get a call from my boss whilst laughing at the matter and telling me that I did a good job and to just give it back for now. The EP were pissed that it was deflated, so they demanded for us to reflate it, but we told them to do it themselves. And our next story. Crazy Karen gets arrested. This happened a few months ago, not today. Conversations are as accurate as I can remember, however, are edited for language. Cast, me, obviously. Karen, entitled mom. ED, embarrassed daughter. Cool dad, manager of the restaurant, and tech dude. Former co-worker turned good friend, semi-retired, think the dude from Big Lebowski. Add a master's in computers and electronics, a bit of mad scientist, shake thoroughly, and you pretty much have tech dude. Background. I'm a field guy for a large communications company. One of the services we provide is wireless calling. I'm not customer facing, just one of the many individuals who make it all work. I'd happened to take a day off, though I did have my work phone on me, just in case. I also foolishly grabbed a zip up hoodie with the company logo on the sleeve on my way out the door. Tech dude calls me up asking me to come grab lunch with him sometime when I'm in the area. As I was actually around the corner from his summer abode, I mentioned the restaurant down the way on the water because they have outdoor seating. 
I get to the restaurant, tech dudes already seated, sipping on a Shirley Temple, clear lemon lime pop, grenadine, and a Marciano cherry to top it off, with another one set aside for me. Yes, we both enjoy these drinks, maybe it's the kids in us, but we were both driving, so no alcohol. I don't pay much attention to the other patrons, just head straight to the table, signaling the waitress I know where I'm going. After our greeting, a big, hey, OP, how you been? An ordering of the daily special, an appetizer is delivered. Tech dude gets down to his latest personal project, asking my thoughts along the way. My work phone interrupts. I answer with company name, just in case it's a test call, before directing the caller to a coworker who'd be able to help them that day. After hanging up the phone, I hear a Fran Drescher-esque voice somewhere behind me. Sir, excuse me, sir, 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 sir and suddenly feel the presence of a person behind my right shoulder. I turn and have a look upwards and see a large Karen of about mid-40s, complete with a haircut that could only be described as make my hair look like the body of a chicken, complete with backside, no feet, neck, or head, standing about eight inches off the back of my chair. I think to myself, holy heck, woman, have you ever heard of COVID? Even though I'm fully vaccinated, I still don't want her looming over me in my personal space. Me. Yes? Karen, did you say you worked for the phones? Pointing at the sleeve of my hoodie, me. Yes, I do. Today's my day off, but I might be able to... Karen, you need to help me right now. My lunch is being utterly ruined by my daughter's ex-boyfriend. And dramatically points to daughter who's trying to hide her face with a menu. There's no one else at the table. Edie, mom, please. Karen, no, I'm going to get this stopped once and for all. It's harassment. Edie. Mom, please let those two eat. I can handle it. Karen. No, these two work for the phones, and I'm going to make them stop this immediately. Tech dude. Hey, I don't work for the telephones or you, lady. Karen. Of course they wouldn't hire anyone like you. Tech dude shoots me a F her look. Me. I'm not able to help you. I'm not in customer. Karen. I demand you block him from harassing her now. Me. Ma'am, I'm sorry you're experiencing this, but you need to call... Karen, no, I won't call anyone. You can do it. I need you to stop him now. Me. Even if I was working, I would not be able to stop him from calling her. I simply... Karen, don't tell me you can't. He's non-stop texting, not calling. Me, seeing that my current approach isn't working. I'm sorry that he's doing that. You should advise your daughter to block his number from her phone. That'd be the easiest way to stop his communications. Karen. He keeps changing numbers. You need to... Poking me in the chest as she said you. Both tech dude and I stand up. I see the manager rushing towards us out of the corner of my eye. Karen immediately switches gears. Oh, I see. Take his side. I'm a loyal long-term customer. I'm going to call your boss and get you F-I-R-E-D. As if spelling out fired in a sing-song tone would change my answers. Manager. Ma'am, you need to return to your table and leave the other customers alone. Karen, oh, so he won't do his job, and I'm the one who needs to leave him alone? Don't you know who I am? I'll have your job. Tech dude, manager, and I all share a I have no flying clue who she is look. Edie has the menu over her head, face down on the table. I truly feel sorry for Edie. Manager, ma'am, you need to sit down and leave my customers alone, or you can leave. Karen, I will not sit down. I can't enjoy my lunch because he points at me, won't do his J-O-B. Again, doing that sing-song spelling bit. Manager looks at me with a, is there anything you want to say look? Me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I simply do not have access to accounts. And Karen tries to interrupt. And even if I did, there are very specific rules for making account changes. Karen tries to interrupt again, but I keep going. I can't just block someone because you interrupt my lunch. Karen tries again. Furthermore, if he keeps changing numbers to avoid blocks, that, as she tries to interrupt again, that is harassment, a legal matter. I would suggest getting a no-contact order and recording any time he does attempt to contact her. Edie quickly walks off towards the front, trying to cover her face with her hands. What I can see of her face is ketchup bottle red. Karen starts again, and this time I let her go. Karen. Bulls. That's just bulls, 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 bulls. You just don't want to do your job. I know you can block him. Manager signals something to one of her wait staff. Ma'am, this is your last warning. These two have been more than kind to you since you've interrupted their lunch. 
I will call the police if you do not sit down or leave immediately. Karen, fine, but I'm calling all of your bosses. You're all going to be fired. Then sing song again, you don't know who you're messing with, with my husband as a lawyer. I mean, really, my kids stopped that when they were five. We all sit down, Edie's still missing, and I've repositioned in order to be sure Karen cannot sneak up on me again. Manager apologizes and offers to move us inside while she checks on the rest of our order, but we decline moving. I notice that all the wait staff is staying off the deck, only the manager's coming out now to help with other customers, avoiding Karen. Karen obviously notices this too and is getting more visibly unsettled trying to bring other customers into siding with her. Tech Dude sees me watching the situation and offers a, hey, F that witch. He almost never swears, so I know he might as well be saying she should see you next Tuesday. I signal the manager over and quietly request that she send someone to check on ED. I was truly concerned about her mental state. The manager informs me that she has sent someone and is currently making sure all of her needs are being taken care of. Then she smiles and says she'll be right back. As the manager returns with our plates, the bartender, with two uniformed officers in tow, walk onto the deck. The manager nods, and all four approach Karen. From what I can hear of the conversation, the manager was the daughter of the owners, and they were going to permanently bar Karen from the premises. The bartender comically takes a picture of Karen. Then the police inform Karen that E.D. will not be leaving the restaurant with Karen. Cool Dad would be picking E.D. up. This sends Karen into orbit. Karen tosses out a few, you can't do this, it's their fault, don't you know who I am? She's my daughter, among other not so kind sayings, flinging her arms, pointing at us and getting louder and louder. Finally, there's a brief scuffle, she ends up in cuffs and gets let out of the restaurant. Edie returns to collect what's left at the table. She approaches us, apologizing for her mom's behavior, says she heard that I was concerned about her and thanks me for my kindness and says that Cool Dad wants to pay for our lunches. We decline, but Cool Dad did it anyway. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.